when you go home, you can't talk. Because y'all been singing all them songs that you love so much. Now I just sing for Jesus. Amen. So I don't mind going hoarse for Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Elder Cooper, musician, deacon, with great devotion. Now we're going to get into the meaning of words. Coming from the book of Hebrews. Amen. I'm just going to read verse 9 through 11. Amen. And it says in verse 9, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into the rest, to that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. May the Lord bless those who read us to hear of his holy word. Let us pray, Father, once again, I come in the mighty name of Jesus as an empty vessel just to be used. Lord. Speak to your people today, open their hearts, minds, and ears, that they'll receive your word. Lord. Let your spirit flow through this place. Free them. Loose the binds that's holding them down. Lord, that they'll be edified and you will be glorified. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 You know, I will read the rest of the passage, but I want to get to that part. Because we know, I'm going to use what's up today. Rest, abide, and walk. Rest, Abide and walk. Those are the three things. Last week I talked to you about how to uh, to make it through the end days. Right? Yes. Okay, well in order to do that, people of God, you have to learn how to do three things. We're going to have to learn how to rest on the word of God. Amen. We're going to have to learn how to abide in his love. And how to walk in his spirit. You learn how to do those three things, and it's a process. It is a learning. So I thank God for you being here. Amen. But it is a learning. Once we learn how to do those three things, these days or any days, it won't matter. Because we'll be in the place that God has called us to, and that's in a perfect, and I mean perfect, relationship with Him. Not that we are perfect, but if we do those three things, the one who is perfect, we God, our heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Yes, so it's coming from the book of Hebrews, and we know, you may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. We know that the Apostle Paul is reminding the church what God did for his people when he led them out of Egypt. Verse 1 says, Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it or miss it. Says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Come on now. Right. Tell you all the time. The Bible says, Hebrews 11, 6, I believe, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone come to God must come believing that he is. That he is what? That he's God. And he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Not seek him. Not go to church. Not sing in the choir. Not preach in the pulpit. Amen. Not pray on the deacon seat. But he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So one of the greatest challenges we have as children of God in the world, they had it that day, we have it in this day. It's getting caught up and becoming conformed to this world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Being sidetracked. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we get off track because we're trying to please Come on everybody. Come on. You can't please everybody. How do I know that Jesus couldn't please everybody? Amen. Come on. Amen. Matter of fact, they killed Amen. him. Uh-oh. For telling the truth. Mm. Father, Father said, I, I find no fault in a man. Mm -hmm. 
He ain't say crucify him. Mm. Why? Because he bad for business. Mm. He, we lied and he come tell the truth. Mm. That's not going to work. Mm. Amen. So we know that this story talks about when God sent Moses to Egypt. Somewhere he didn't want to go. And he told him to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. They didn't listen then and they're not listening now. We live in a fast-paced world. Everybody's going nowhere fast. Right. You ever notice that? Everybody in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you're not careful, you'll be in a hurry to get out of here. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to work or nothing. You ain't got nothing to do. Right. Right. But you're in a hurry. Right. Why is that? Amen. When you're sitting in that bad movie you done paid $30 to go see, you don't jump up and leave that. Uh -oh. Why? You want to see what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. The same thing that happened is a bad movie. Mm. Ain't nothing gonna happen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Everybody's in a hurry. They're going nowhere fast. We got drive-through weddings, oh. online divorce. Oh. You can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> but people are afraid and they are confused. Why? Because the wheel is coming off. Everything is out of order. Mm. And it happened in the garden. Went out on to God and been going worse and worse ever since. Amen. Amen. But God is a God of order. Come on now. Amen. Amen. And he set things in order from the foundation of the world. He set it in order in Genesis. It was a process that he set in place. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, our problem is we don't want to go through the process. Uh -oh. Everything is a process. Mm -hmm. Amen. Getting ready to get married is a process. Making friends is a process. Right. Everything. Learn how to do your job is a process. You don't just do it. They hire you and you hit the ground running because you know everything to go on. You don't even know what the stuff is that you need. Right. <laughs> Amen. So don't nobody show you. It's a process. Amen. So we don't want to, we want to skip the process. Mm. Amen. Because it takes some work, effort. But to everything, you know that uh, Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, King Solomon figured that out. He figured it out when he said, that to everything, first thing he said, there's a time and a season. Amen. But he says a time to be born yeah. and a time to die. Come on now. That was the first thing he had on the watch. Because life, this life is a process. It starts from the day we are born and it ends physically the day we die. But when we die physically, make no mistake about it, that's when eternity begins. The last breath you take on this side of the river going to be the first one you take on the other. Uh -oh. Whether it be good or bad. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because the Spirit of God cannot die. Come on. Amen. 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 So we're going to spend eternity somewhere. Amen. 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 But a process is how we get from point A to point B. Amen. It's how we begin and how we end. Mm -hmm. look, look, when you start a test, you start the test, but it's a process to finish it. Amen. 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 Some of them have a time constraint on them. Mm -hmm. And you be trying to hurry up because you're going to run out of time. Uh -oh. The same thing is true in life. Everybody's trying to hurry up, mm -hmm. but they're hurrying up doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Amen. We need to get in a hurry for Jesus. Amen. 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 In his ministry, his church, on, his business. Yeah. But we're in a hurry about our own business <laughs> and wasting precious time. Amen. But listen, the word process means to proceed, continue, advance. It's the act of moving forward. We want to keep, we have to keep moving forward. We do it in, in life, you know, when we get on a job, we want to keep moving up. Amen. Some people get complacent. That's all right. But you can't get complacent with Jesus. Amen. Say that. Amen. You're going to go back down. You're going to be conformed. Yeah. You're not going to stay in the same place. Right. You're going backwards. You're regressing. You have to keep pressing your way, as the Apostle Paul says. Amen. Possession. Process is designed to help us grow. Not only physically. We grow from a child to an adult. That's a process. Mm -hmm. But when we're born again, we grow spiritually. He said, we're bathed in Christ. Now you're supposed to desire the sincere milk of the Lord, of the word. Amen? So you can grow thereby. That's what the Bible says. 
Amen. 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 But that whole process is what God set up for his creation. He had Israelites. The Israelites had a process. God told them. He told Moses. Look, he told Moses. He promised Abraham before he even talked to Moses that the, his chosen people, the Jews, would be given a land flowing with milk and honey. That was the land of the Canaanites. Right. The Canaanites, the Jebusites. All of them. They were giants. They were hybrid beings. God said, I'm going to give you their land. It's the grapes is bigger than your head. Mm -hmm. When they sent the, the spies over, they came back with a, a cluster of grapes. Four men had to carry it. It's, they came back with a minority report, though. See, God told them, go in and take the land. I didn't gave it to you. But they came back. Everybody but Joshua and Caleb. Came back and said, ain't no way we're going to go take this land. There's giants in that land. We like grasshoppers. Amen. That's why didn't nobody but Joshua and Caleb make it into God's rest. Yeah. He promised them rest in a promised land. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He promises us rest for eternity in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's our promised land. Amen. So look, he told them though, he said, but in order for them to get to this promise, man, they're going to have to go through a process. Yeah, okay? Man. And in Genesis 15 and 13, God said unto Abraham, know for a surety, of an assurity that the seed shall be strangers in a land that is not theirs. And shall serve them, they shall afflict them for 400 years. Wow. Because from Malachi to Matthew, 430 years, God did not speak to his people at all. Why? Because all through the Old Testament, Malachi's the last book of the Old Testament, they didn't do nothing to sin against God. All through them, he, they just would not act right. That sounds for me, anybody. Just wouldn't act right. God wanted them to be an example nation. They said, no, instead of changing the people, they became conformed to what they were. Amen. I'm looking at Malachi. And I'm just going to read a, 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 a few things from it. It says, the people's relationship with God was broken because of sin. Jerusalem had been rebuilt. The temple had been rebuilt for a decade. But the people had become complacent in their worship of God, hypocrites, neglecting God, and careless living having devastated, listen, devastating consequences. Mm. So he said, you know what? I'm going to let them go into Egypt and I'm going to let them oppress them and kill them and do whatever they want. They're going to make slaves out of them. For 400 years. It's right here. I just read it. He prophesied. Amen. In verse 14, Genesis 15 and 14, he said, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Mm -hmm. When they left uh -huh. Egypt, they left with all the gold, everything in Egypt. You remember that? They left with great substance. Amen. And in the process of the fullness of time, God fulfilled his promise. Amen. 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 And we know he sent Moses to deliver them, and we know Moses got them out of Egypt. But he couldn't get Egypt out of Egypt. And that's what's going on today. Amen. People have become conformed to this world, and I'm talking about professed believers, going along to get along. Mm. I saw, look, I look at some stuff that I was looking at an interview, the lady asked me, she said, do you believe that a transgender woman is a real woman? He said, absolutely not. A transgender woman is a man. Right. No such thing as a transgender woman being a real woman. Come on now. But their, their mind is gone. Mm -hmm. They want you to pretend uh -huh. that a man is a woman. Mm -hmm. They want you to pretend like you ain't got no sense at all that a woman is a man. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but I won't be pretending anything. Amen. Come on now. A woman is a woman is a man is a man. Y'all can change 
Look, that's why God going to come back and wipe this place out. Just like he did before, but it's going to be fire next time. That's what the Bible says. And everybody who's going along with it is going to deal with it. Come on now. Amen. But he told them he was going to send them to Canaan at Promised Land. It's going to be flowing with milk and honey. It's going to, they're going to rest from all their labor. He freed them from yeah. slavery. He delivered them from their taskmasters in Egypt. But he couldn't get Egypt out of them. So through the wilderness, all they did was murmur mm -hmm. and complain. Mm -hmm. Everything God did for them. He had a pillar of fire by night to warm them up and keep all the wild animals away from them. And during the day, he put a cloud to shade them by day so they wouldn't be hot. Mm. The Bible said that none of their sandals and their clothes were out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God kept it all. Yeah. But all they did was murmur and complain. Almost two billion people. And all the miracles that uh, Moses did, the part the Red Sea, everything, they still would not believe. And I hear people all the time, well, you know, if I was back there, you know, Jesus was walking on water and feeding the five thousand men. I said, man, you'd be just like them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You would have been just like them. I said, because God is doing more now oh, than he now. did then. Amen. And you're still going right. Amen. 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 But we are no different than the Jews. Amen. The Bible says that the fullness of time God sent his son. Amen. Born of a virgin, amen, yes. under the law, yes. to save us and send, give us a promise, yes. give us some rest, amen, from our taskmaster. Who is our taskmaster? You are. Uh -oh. You your own worst enemy. Uh -oh. Self, uh -oh. selfishness, self-centeredness. We are our own taskmaster, amen. Satan himself is our taskmaster. Because when you're not born in the spirit of God, you belong to the devil. Make no mistake about it. He said you can't serve two masters, which means you're going to serve one or the other. Yeah. Jesus said you either with me or you against me. you gathering with me, souls, or you scattering them abroad. Yeah. He said you're serving me or you're serving the devil. Make no, there ain't no in between. But God wants to give us rest. Yes. Rest for our soul. But like the Jews, some would rather be slaves to sin than to be free and serve God. Amen. We become like them, institutionalized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, they became institutionalized. They couldn't help it. They wanted to go back to the meat pots. They said, well, it wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. Amen. The grandmamas have been rolled over with the grinding wheel. The kids, babies have been taken and killed. So it wasn't that bad. You know, we'll, we'll stay in a messed up situation. Mm -hmm. Amen. If we get comfortable in it. Say that. If we can get conformed in anything. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. And they did it because of unbelief. He said they couldn't enter into my rest. Why? Because they didn't have no belief. So God let them go for 40 years in the wilderness. And he told Moses, you tell them I heard what they said. And that's right, they're going to die right out here in this world. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody going into the promised land of this group but Joshua and Caleb. Amen. But in Hebrews, our text 4, 1 and 2, it says, Let us therefore fear. See, there's no fear of God. Mm. Now everybody just do what they want to do. Why? Because God's not choke slamming them when they do it. Mm -hmm. See, in the Old Testament, when you lie, he kills you. Amen. When you stole something, you cut your hand off. When the kids didn't act right, they stoned them to death. See, but now we're under the dispensation of grace. So God said, well, I'm not going to say nothing right now. I'm going to wait to eat judgment. And then I'm going to let you know what's going on. But that's not a good thing. Because people don't fear judgment because they, it's not any instant consequences. See, you act right on your job because you get fired. Mm -hmm. Ain't it amazing how you can hold your tongue on your job? Mm -hmm. People make your hottest fish grease, you don't say nothing. He's in total control of his emotions. No, he's not. Just know he opened his mouth, he's going to lose that job. So we can control ourselves when we want to. Amen. We don't cuss, we don't do nothing. Amen. 
ain't leaving either. They can cuss you out. Maybe you do twice the work, you ain't going away. Mm-hmm. You're going to stay there. Somebody here look at you wrong, you done left the church. Yep. Yep. Well, he looked at me, I, I don't know, it looked like he just undressed me with his eyes. Or, or she didn't even speak when I walked in. Ever. <laughs> he said, look, fear leads to promise me and left us to enter into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Amen. We can't, we, we don't want to come short of the grace of God. See, in order to serve God, you have to go through a process. Amen. 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 It's called sanctification. See, the process that God takes us through is called sanctification. People, I tell people all the time, God will come and save you where you are. You're a crackhead, God will save you. Yeah. Dope addict, prostitute, whatever it is. Thief, murder, rock, God, if you ask him, he'll save you. Yes. Amen. Why? Because he loves you. Amen. But you, he won't leave you there. Yeah. See, he's not going to save you and then walk out and say, well, you know, be the breath, best thief you can be. Right. Try not to get caught. Right. Right. You know, be the best prostitute or drug addict. No, he's not. He said, I'm saving you so I can pull you out of this mess. Yes. Amen. 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 And what you couldn't do, I can Come on now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. God can do anything. Amen. People say, yes. well, I can't help it. I'm saying, well, you can't, but he can. So the fact that you're still struggling means that he, not that he's not able. It means you're not willing. Amen. Right. Right. Come on now. Make up your mind. Come on now. Right. Amen. He won't leave you there. But he has an order, and God has a process that we have to go through. Sanctification means to be separated. Yes. Set apart. Yes. Amen. Yes. For God's service. Yes. Amen. We all are at something. Yes. You understand know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ain't nobody you know, holy, you ain't been saved all your life, born and just started reading the Bible at two years old. And, yeah, no, no, no. We all at something. Amen. 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 I almost said something, but the Holy Ghost kept me. Uh-oh. But listen. Uh, <laughs> And we need to be set apart for God's glory and God's service. Amen. Okay. Yes. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 13, But we are bound to give thanks to God for you, brother, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through what? Sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. You can't be sanctified if you don't want to believe the word of God. You can't come up with your own beliefs and your own opinions. Amen. You sanctified. We are washed. We're sanctified by the word of God. To be sanctified means to grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's 2 Peter 3 and 18. You don't have to put it up there. But all too often, we would like to skip the process. You know, we, we want, like I said, we want to drive through salvation. We want to Hit it and quit it. One and done. You know, I don't want to never have to do nothing again for Christ. But anytime I call him, I want him to answer. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't want to give him the time of day, but boy, if I need him. Right. Yeah, OMG, oh my God. Uh-huh. My leg cut off. Oh, Lord, well, somebody help me. Amen. As soon as they fix your leg, God is an afterthought again. Uh-huh. Amen. But we would like to skip the sanctification process, amen, and start to doing things our own way. See, that's the struggle we have. We don't want to wait on the Lord. Mm. We don't want to put in no time in. I'm talking about resting, abiding, and walking. Yes. See, in that order. And I'm going to tell you in a minute, I may not finish today, but I'm going to tell you in a minute what that means. Do like a one of those series, keep you coming back. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <That's what> <laughs> but we want to skip it in Proverbs 14 and 12, though. Proverbs 14 and 12 tells us, he said, there's a way that seems right unto a man. Mm-hmm. But the end thereof is death. Mm-hmm. You know, Proverbs, that's Solomon, that's the wisest man ever 
No one ever will, no one of the riches, he had everything. And he figured it out in the end. He said, boy, we think we right in our own eyes. He said, if we go that way, we're going to end up eternally dead, cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Amen. We all have our own opinions, mm. our own way we think we ought to do things and other people should do things. We be telling people what they ought to do. Don't never take no advice from somebody doing worse than you. Uh -oh. That's for free. Yes, if they if they ain't got no house, don't let them tell you nothing about doing nothing with your house. They don't have a clue. They don't even have one. People don't have kids telling you how to raise yours. Don't listen to them. Amen. Our ways lead to death and destruction. So the first step is to learn how to rest. We got to rest on the word. Yes. See, we just got to, he gave us his word, and we know it's true, so we need to rest on that. Forget Amen. what people say, what yes. Satan say. We always say what we can't do. When God said we can do all things, all things. through Christ, yes. which strengthens us. Yes. So stop talking about what you, I can't do that, I won't be. I hear things like, well, you know, I. I ain't going to never get no husband. I said, you keep saying that. You sure won't. Amen. You sure will not. Keep speaking. it. You sure will not. You better start saying what God says. Amen. But the first step is learning how to rest in the Lord. Only then can we stop focusing on ourselves. See, right now, until we rest in the Lord, it's all about us. It's all about old sweetie. Oh, me. Everything's about me. My life, your life, everything's about me. Pleasing me. Amen. But when we stop doing that and rest in the Lord, we stop leaning to our own understanding. Amen. Amen. To trust in God's word, to follow God's will and God's way, and to rest in God's promise. That's what it means to rest in the Lord. So we have to start believing what God said. You say, Pastor, I believe it. Mm. We start, have to start having true faith. Okay? You say, Pastor, I believe it. James 2 and 19 and 20 says, Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils believe in trouble. That's it. Amen. So what is that supposed to mean? You say you believe it. Mm -hmm. Amen. The demons know who Jesus is. But they have no intention of obeying his word. And he said, you got that head, believe you, just like them. They headed to hell, you going to. Why? Because that belief in your head is not going to change your actions. All right. Right. That's why he said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, Amen. thou shalt be saved. Amen. Why? Because with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. Right. And with the mouth, confession is made. On to salvation. Not if you believe in your head. Everybody tell you they're Christian. That don't mean nothing. You know how many Christians go in hell? 99.9%. Uh, <laughs> .9%. Amen. Why? Because they're not who they say they are. Come on now. Amen. James 2 and 20 says, But wilt thou, O now, O vain man, when well, you know, O vain man, that faith without is dead. I don't care what you do. You don't work to be saved, but once you say, you will never get out of serving and working for Christ. Amen. It's from Genesis to Revelation. I've been telling you all the time. Blessed are they that die in the Lord, right? But they shall rest from all their labor. Yes. And what? And their works do follow them. Behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according to his works. Amen. Amen. Salvation, believing, and faith in God is not in what we say. It's in what we do. Come on now. Amen. That's what he tells you. Right. Don't you can say anything until you start acting it out. Mm. You ain't doing nothing but talking loud and saying nothing. All right. All right. He said, if this, your life is not reflecting on what you say you believe, then your belief is in vain. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Everything. God did in Egypt, all the plagues, all the miracles, everything he did, parting the Red Sea, bringing water from a rock, gave him manna from heaven, 
all they did is complain. God's doing everything for us. All we do is complain. We should be breaking our neck to get out here on Sunday and lift up holy hands. Yes, just to yes. say, Lord, I love you. Yes, Lord, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Lord, oh, Lord, thank you for yes. blessing me. Because yes. I know I don't deserve it. Yes. But you won't do that. Mm -hmm. But you'll go to the concert and A to the his old Z to the A. You'll bless Jay-Z and everybody else. You'll worship them. And they ain't got no heaven or hell for you. But God said, you go ahead on. Just use your voice worshiping them. Because mm -hmm. they ain't going to judge you. I am. And I'm going to show, show it. I'm going to play it back for you. Mm -hmm. I ain't not one time I see you praising me. Amen. Give me the time of day. People of God, he didn't put it on my heart. He was pressing so hard. He said, <laughs> he called me Michael. He said, Michael, so many people going to hell and ain't funny. <laughs> All right. He said, I need y'all to tell them. Because the people just don't know they're eating. They just lost. Why? Because they lean into their own understanding. They think they're going to make the decision. You're not going to heaven because you want to. You're not going to heaven because you want to. God has a prerequisite. You're going to have to meet it. Amen. And it's him. I'm going to get to it in a minute. But what we'll it. Everything he did was to prove to them that they can trust him. Amen. Everything God has done for us, and I know he done brought you out of some stuff, yes. he did it to prove to you that you can trust him. Yes, Lord. Why? Because he know if you trust him, you can rest in him. Come on now. You can rest in his word. Come on now. Regardless of your circumstances. Yes. Amen. Amen. You don't have to know where it's coming from. All you got to know is God's got it. Man. He promised. Hebrews 4 and 6 in our text. Seeing therefore it remains that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Amen. Over two million people left Egypt and two made it into the promised land. Amen. That minority report. Amen. The people did not Trust God, so they died in the wilderness. Amen. True faith is proven by action. Come on now. True faith. Uh -huh. The Bible says Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. How do they know Abraham believed God? Because uh -huh. in Genesis 22 and 9, he offered up his only begotten son. Uh -huh. He took him up to a mountain and was getting ready to kill him. Him just like a, a sacrifice yeah. until the Lord stopped it. Called him Abraham, Abraham. He said, Don't hurt the lad. He said, Don't hurt him. Yeah. He said, Now I know yeah. that you won't withhold nothing from me. Yeah. And he looked over there and there was a ram in the bush. Mm -hmm. And he said, Take the ram and sacrifice. You and your son go back home. But when he told Abraham to take Isaac up there and sacrifice him, he didn't think twice. He didn't tell his wife, thank God. Uh, he, he didn't talk to nobody. He just told me. His son told me, he said, Lord, he said, Father, uh, I got the wood. Right, right. He said, I see the knife. He said, we got everything. He said, but where's the sacrifice? Right, right. What did he tell him? He said, son, the Lord will provide yes. a sacrifice. Yes. But the bottom line is if he had to kill him with that knife that he had sharpened up, he sure enough was going to do it. Why? Because God told him to do it. See, we want to do what we want to do. We, we smarter than God. You know, God say do some way. Uh, hey, you know what I mean? You know, you gotta, you, we got more love than God now. He said just love him. Okay. You go ahead on. You better do what God say do. That's what you better do. Amen. But he believed God. How did they know? Because his actions in the time of testing yes. proved it. Job believed God. How? Because God allowed the devil to do everything he could to him. But what did he say? Though he slay me, yet shall I trust him. Yes. All his kids dead and gone. Everything gone. Richest man in the east ain't got nothing now. Sitting in a in the middle of the floor, full of boils. 
Bible says he's scraping them swords with some broken pots. Mm. He's just scraping the dead skin off. Mm. His wife said, "You look. Why don't you just curse God and die?" He said, "You talk like a crazy woman." Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, "The Lord give it. Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord." That's faith. Amen. So real faith is what we need if you're gonna rest in the Lord. If you're gonna rest in His Word, you need you some real faith. Amen. To trust, abide, and walk is a process. We must study to show ourselves approved in 2 Timothy 2 and 15. He says, study to show yourself approved to who? Not me, not you, not the people. He said to God, a workman that need not be made ashamed that can rightly devise the word of truth. People are going to be lost because they don't want to study. They'll study in college. Amen. Even pay for it. But they don't want to study the word of God. I ain't talking about everybody. I'm just saying. Some people are, oh Lord. And it's free. You can get a BA degree from Jesus for free. That's a born again. You can get that for free. You won't even come and stay. Amen. Faith is not in what we say. It's in what we do. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith it's impossible to please God. That's what he's talking about. But they who come to him must believe that he is, and he's a reward of them that diligence. I told you that earlier. Philippians 4 and 6 says, be careful for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God will guard your heart and mind, mind through Christ Jesus our Lord. You got us a process. Step two. We got to learn how to abide. I'm almost done. Abiding is to trust God and wait on his promise. See, you can't be in and out. See, you can't be one way in the church and another way at work. All right. They call that a hypocrite. You kill your witness that way. Once your witness is killed, nobody's listening to nothing you got to say anyway. All right. They don't need to serve the God you serve because you, you still bind. Hmm. He said, so I know he can't free me. I get it. Praise the Lord. But to abide is to trust God and wait on his promise. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us what? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Amen. That's what he said. You can't be double-minded. See, double-minded, if you look at James 1 and 5, let, let's just look at that. Because, see, we can't, you know, I know people say, well, God knows my heart, and, you know, yes, God knows your heart, and that's not a good thing. <laughs> so your heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. That's what the Bible says about every man's heart, every woman's heart. But if you look at James, if any man like wisdom, let him ask of God, they give it to all men liberally and upright it not. He won't hold it back from them. And it shall be given him. Okay? Verse 6. But let him ask in what? Faith. Faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea. Driven with the wind and tossed. But let not that man think. Don't even think. You're going to receive nothing from God. Because a double-minded man mm. is unstable in all of his ways. Oh, God said, I don't play games. He said, if you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. If you get serious with me, I'll get serious with you. He said, but if you want to play the game, go ahead. He said, you can play it till you give up the ghost and come up here and I tell you, depart from me. You work of iniquity. I never knew you. We ain't never had no relationship. You never surrendered your life to me. You never lived your life for me. You never did nothing for me. So don't tell me what you did in my name. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. Mm. Psalm 91 and 1. He said, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Dwelling, abiding, it means remaining. Amen. Stay in there. You can't be in and out. Amen. 
yes, we have fear sometimes. Yes, we have doubt sometimes, but we don't stay there. Amen. We can't, you can't be in out. He said, get in, and that's it. Stay in. He said, if you abide in me and I'll abide in you. Amen. St. John 15 and 5. And I'm getting ready to close right now. St. John 15 and 5. Jesus said, I am the vine. Yes. All right. And you are the branches. All the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him the same, bringeth forth much fruit. Let me stop right there. That's right. See, when he came across the fig tree, he was hungry, he didn't have no fruit on it. He, he cursed it, and it died. What he's trying to tell you, anybody that's born in the Spirit of God is bearing fruit. What is that fruit? Souls. You're sharing the gospel. A wise man wins souls. That's what the Bible said. He said, if you're in me, and I'm in you, you are bearing some fruit. Right. You are not barren. Because I'm there. If I'm there, fruit is coming. You sin, you leading somebody to Christ. You see what I'm saying? You lead somebody out of darkness into that marvelous light. That's what that means. And then he said, for without me, you're not bearing no fruit? That's because Christ ain't in you. I didn't say it, he said it. Simple as that. I love the Bible, it's elementary to me. Plain English. Amen. He means what he says and he says what he means. And last but not least, step three, we need to learn how to what, walk in the spirit. People, it's a process. What is that process? Sunday school, Bible study, prayer meeting, women's meeting, men's meeting. Everything you can do to deal with God and God's people, the word of God, that's what you need to be doing. That's not what we need to cut out. Right. That's what we need to do more of. Amen. But we cut that out and do every, all this other stuff, wasting nothing but wasting time. Amen. And we wonder why we stay complacent. We stay where we are. We're not growing in the spirit. We're not. We're weak. The flesh is weak. Amen. But Colossians 2 and 6. Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Colossians. He says, ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. So what? Walk in it, rooted and built up in it, and established in the faith, as ye have what, been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So you say you've been born in the Spirit of God, then act like it. Mm -hmm. We need to see some signs. People of God, I'm just telling you what I know. I know. I know. Galatians 5 and 16. He says, this I say then, walk in the Spirit. And you will not fulfill the lust of your flesh. All right. Simple as that. Because we know the flesh lust what fights against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh they contrary to one another. Isaiah 40 and 30. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young man shall utterly fall. Mm. But they that wait on the Lord mm, shall what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be. Romans 8 and 14, these three four, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. But if you look at Romans 8, 8 and 9, as I close. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh. Is that right? Mm -hmm. But in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ. I'll let you finish it. You don't belong to him. You must be born again. And when you're born again you become a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold all things that come new. And the first thing that come new is your attitude towards sin and towards God. And towards God's word, God's church, God's people. That's the first thing. Yes. Amen. Amen. God is still inviting people today. Anybody who wants to listen. Anybody Amen. who wants to come. Anybody who wants to rest, abide, and walk. He's still 
Send an invitation out today. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. He said, come on to me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Yes. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. From a meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your soul. Why? For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand, praise. He said the enemy came, the thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal your joy, kill your witness, and destroy your soul. He said, I came that you might have a life and that you might have it more abundantly. A lot of people wait until they die to live the abundant life. You don't have to wait till you die. Jesus promised that we can have abundant life right here and there. Amen. 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 He said we live in heavenly place yes. in Christ Jesus. Yes. He said, yeah, you still here, but I already got money for you up there. Yes. All right. It's already done. Amen. It's over. But I need you to rest, abide, and walk in me. Yes. Amen. Amen. Everything else is futile. It's a waste of time. So we're standing. I know we got to do communion, but we're standing. And if there's anyone here today that's heard the voice of God, you've heard God's voice. You know that you need Jesus Christ. You know you're tired. You want to you wanna rest on the word of God. You want to abide in the secret place of the Most High. And you want to walk in the Spirit. If there's anyone here today, and that's you, I just want you to raise your hand. You don't even have to come down here. Just raise your hand if you want Jesus. If you're saying, you know what? I need him. I need him right now. Yes, Praise Lord. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. I'm not going to even make you come down.